Welcome to the Light of the Nations Gospel Program. I'm your host, Dr. Shalini Palil, live on Cross TV Network from Duarte, California. Thank you for joining in to view our program. We trust and pray that you are being blessed, those of you that are afar off in Egypt and Israel and all the other different parts of the world. We pray and trust that the Lord will speak to you continuously through his word as we share it week after week. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, we ask for your presence to come down in our midst. Holy Spirit, we seek your help to be able to understand God's word and to be able to live it in our daily lives, to be able to put on spiritual lenses that we may be able to see the truth of your word. I pray that you will deliver us from all the deception of the enemy and all the powers of darkness. And we will, Lord, be careful to give you glory, praise, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. The coronavirus is still the hot topic of discussion, and so I choose uh, to use it again this evening as a springboard. We know that this coronavirus has stopped all of us in our tracks, and all of life has come to a screeching halt. It is so unfortunate that thousands of people have lost their lives and other thousands of people have lost their jobs and their means of livelihood. Our jobs, we thought, were our security, but we have found out that it is the opposite. On the contrary, today we have our jobs and we're all safe and secure. Tomorrow our jobs are gone and we are in a desperate situation. We brought expensive homes and expensive cars with a good intention of paying off the mortgage and uh, of paying off the interest on a monthly basis. But now all of this has changed and we actually don't know how to go about taking care of these basic needs that need to be fulfilled on a monthly basis. All our elaborate wedding celebrations, our luncheons, and our banquets have all stopped. We can't have them anymore because of COVID-19. Our vacation plans have been uh, wiped out. Travel plans have been wiped, wiped out because of the coronavirus or COVID-19. Who would have ever thought that this would be so? We all thought that this would, life would continue on every day like it was. But we have found out that things have changed and the COVID-19 has reversed the entire situation and, con and the condition of the entire globe. Our schools and our universities have been shut down and it is causing a lot of stress to many parents that have to take care of sometimes two and three kids and they have to be tutored at home. How do you manage tutoring them from eight to three <clears throat> on a daily basis in your little homes? It's kind of hard and difficult. <coughs> Excuse me. Our film industry has been shut down. It's closed and stalled. Every aspect of life has been affected by COVID-19. It is so unfortunate that we cannot even celebrate the death of our loved ones. We have to leave them, say goodbye to them in a very simple way, with not even, uh, not even allowed to have sufficient people that come to say farewell to the departed soul. Again, all of this because of COVID-19. <clears throat> Hopefully, we have all come to the realization that all of these things are meaningless. Our big mansions, our cars, our great good uh, jobs, well-paying salaries, our luncheons, our banquets, our games, and all of these things are absolutely meaningless. 
we should look into the book of Ecclesiastes to get a better look uh, of what the preacher or the writer of the book of Ecclesiastes has to say about all these different celebrations and accomplishments and uh, achievements and uh, uh, attitude towards life. This book, as you may know, was authored by King Solomon, who had been granted the gift of wisdom by God himself, who is the source of all wisdom. So I'd like for you to please come with me to the book of Ecclesiastes, and we'll begin at chapter 1, verse 1. The words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. Uh, the word preacher over here is not used in the way you and I ordinarily understand the meaning of the word preacher, but it is used for one who assembles to gather people together. Thus these words refer to Solomon as a person who convened an assembly of the wise in order to explore in a formal manner the meaning of life. Verse 2. Vanity of vanities, said the preacher, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. The word vanity is translated as utter emptiness. And the word vanity is used here to mean quickly passing away, something that is not permanent, something that is very temporary, and something that passes away. We look at verse 3. What profit had the man of all his labor which he taketh under the sun. What does a man profit by doing all the labor and all the works that he undertakes for himself and he uh, gets involved with or indulges himself in under the sun? <clears throat> we read now from verses, it's why? Because one generation verse 4 passeth away and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. Nothing is permanent. You work hard, you earn, you establish, you gather, you harvest and then you're gone and then the next generation comes and the cycle keeps on being repeated. Now we look from verses 5 to verse 7. The sun also ariseth and the sun goes down and hasteth to his place where he arose. The wind goeth toward the south and turneth about the north and to the north. It dwelleth about continually and the wind returneth again according to its circuit. All the rivers run into the sea. Yea, the sea is not full unto the place from whence the rivers come. Thither they return again. The sun, the wind, and the rivers, these elements of God's creation go about their expected courses day after day after day, season after season after season. Verse 8, all things are full of labor. Man cannot utter it. The eye, it is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. What is he talking here in uh, verse 8 about the eye? Mentions that about the unsatiable appetite of the eye. The eye is never satisfied. You know, you see things, then you want to go see more. You want to check things out. You want to go see new houses. You want to go to new places for your vacation. You want to go see new cars, you, all, everything, your eye, our eyes are never satisfied with what we have seen. We want to keep on, on and on and on seeing new things. You can never satisfy the eye. It's never satisfied with what it has already seen. Verse 9. The thing that had been, it is, that shall be, and that which is done, and that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. The writer is saying that everything goes on like same, you know, there's hardly anything new. It's just a repetition of the same old thing over and over again. Now we come to verse 12. I, the preacher, this is King Solomon, was king over Israel in Jerusalem. That verse is self-explanatory, don't need any explanation. Verse 13 and 14. And I gave my heart to seek and search out by wisdom concerning all things that are done under heaven. This sore travail had God given to the sons of man to be exercised therewith. I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, verse 14, and behold, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. He says everything is 
temporary. Life passes by and any attempt to seize it is like catching or trying to grasp the wind. Impossible. Now we come to verse 16. I commune with mine own heart, saying, Lo, I am come to great estate, and have gotten more wisdom than all they that have been before me in Jerusalem. Yea, my heart had great experience of wisdom and knowledge. You see, the city of Jerusalem had existed thousands of years before King Solomon. It did have kings like Melchizedek that ruled over it, and also Adonai, Zedek, and others. So it's nothing, this is not a new, uh, a new city. It says, I commune with mine own heart, saying, Lo, I am come to great estate, and have gotten more wisdom than all they that have been before me in Jerusalem. Yea, my heart had great experience of wisdom and knowledge. Now we come to verse uh, 18. He comes to the realization that all is vanity, empty, and passing away. Everything that he sees, everything that the eye has seen, everything that the eye still desires to see is just plain old empty, vanity, and is not permanent but temporary and passes away. All are, and I gave my heart, verse 17, and I gave my heart to know wisdom and to know madness and folly. I perceive that this also is vexation of spirit. It was, it was not wisdom that Solomon judges absurd, but rather becoming more wise, as we see in chapter 2 and verse 15, and overly wise, as seen in chapter 7 and verse 16. He comes to the realization that all is vanity, empty, and passes away or passing away. Verse 18, for in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. Now we come to chapter 2. He goes down the list, a lot of things that he addresses, and he goes down the list that are vain, that are empty, that are futile, and that are temporary and do not last. Chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. I said in my heart, go to now, I will prove thee with mirth, therefore enjoy pleasure, and behold, this also is vanity. So he tried, and of course he had access to experiencing joy and pleasure, but he came to the realization, and that too is all vanity. Verse 2, I said of laughter, it is madness, and of mirth, what doeth it, or what doth it do? Nothing substantial is really achieved. Uh, pleasure and joy is sheer madness. Pleasure and joy is sheer madness. Verse 3, I sought in my heart to give myself unto wine, yet, acquainted, yet acquainting mine heart with wisdom and to lay hold on folly, till I might see what was that good for the sons of men which they should do under the heaven all the days of their lives. So we are now on verse 3. He says, wine and wisdom, they are also futile and empty. Verses 4 to 6, I made me great works. I builded me houses. I planted me vineyards, just like us. From one house to another house to another house, from one uh, farm to another farm to another farm, you know, we just buy. And we, we chase after, and we yearn, and we desire, never being satisfied. I made me great works, I builded me houses, I planted me vineyards, I made me gardens and orchards, and I planted trees in them of all kinds of fruits. And I made me, I made me pools of water to water therewith the wood that bringeth forth fruits. I got me servants and maidens, and had servants born in mine house. Also I had great possessions of great and small cattle above all that were in Jerusalem before me. Solomon, King Solomon had worked for 13 years building the king's house, 1 Kings chapter 9 and verse 10. Then he built the house of the forest of Lebanon, 1 Kings chapter 10 and verse 17. Another house for his wife, Pharaoh's daughter, 1 Kings chapter 9 and verse 24. He also fortified the cities of Hazar, Megiddo, Gezer, Beth Haran, <coughs> Balat, and uh, Tadmor, 1 Kings chapter 9, 5, 17, and 18. Vineyards, gardens, and orchards, 1 Kings chapter 4 and verse 30 
three. All of these things he had gotten for himself. Verse 9 says, I got me servants and maidens and servants born in my house and great possessions of great and small cattle. Maintaining the various buildings and uh, gardens of the king must have demanded an extensive staff of servants. Now we come to verse 8. I gathered me also silver and gold and the peculiar treasure of kings and of provinces. I got me men singers and women singers and the delight of the sons of men as musical instruments and as musical instruments at, and that of all sorts. Solomon's riches were unsurpassed by the kings of the ancient world. We see that in scripture. Verses 9 and 10, so I was great and increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. Also my wisdom remained with me. And whatsoever mine eyes desired, I kept not from them. I withheld not my heart from any joy. For my heart rejoiced in all of my labor. And this was my portion of all of my labor. He told, he had the means and the ability to fulfill all that his heart desired. This, uh, now we, I'll give you a summary of Solomon's uh, search for satisfaction. A summary of all the verses that we have read. Just sum it up for you. So we see here all the things that he sought fulfillment in and the result of the things that he sought after. So he sought after wisdom. The result, he said, much grief and increased sorrow. He sought after pleasure. Under that would come laughter and mirth. The result, he found out empty vanity. Then his accomplishments of building projects and agricultural endeavors and engineering experiments. The result, vanity. Possessions, large number of servants, herds of cattle, wealth and silver and gold, choirs and orchestras, and 700 wives. The result, vanity. All of these things were vain. He came to that conclusion. Mind you, this is a man to whom God had granted the special gift of wisdom. And now, after experiencing all these things, he ha has come to the conclusion, and he says there's nothing really to all of this. It's just empty and hollow and vain. We come to the last chapter of the book, which is chapter 12, and we read from verses 13 through 14. Let's see what he says. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. He concludes this book with these words, sober words, words of wisdom, words that will deal us good if we pay heed to it and follow after it. Let us gather the conclusion of the whole matter. Number one, fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Whether you have the wealth, the money, the houses, the projects, the or or orchards, the farms, the cattle, the kind, the wine, the women, whatever. Forget about all those things. You should have one thing. Fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man. Verse 14. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every sacred thing whether it be good or whether it be evil. Our Lord will judge every work, whether, it's a, whether they have been done in secret, whether the works have been good, or whether the works have been evil. Fear him in all your ways. Fear him in all your doing. Fear him in all your saying, in what you do, in where you, what you, the path that you take and walk. And what you say, fear God is to obey him, do what he commands us. King Solomon had drifted away from God during his lifetime, pursuing different ways to achieve satisfaction. Only after many years of futile searching did he finally remember the true source of peace, a proper relationship with God. Solomon wrote Ecclesiastes to pass on this truth. Satisfaction can be found only by fearing God and keeping his commandments. Amen. Fearing, uh, uh, satisfaction can be found only by fearing God and keeping his commandments. See, everything else is temporary. Everything else is not dependable. But if you fear God, you walk in his ways, and you <coughs> love him and serve him, with all your heart, mind, and soul, it is going to be well with your soul. 
all the things that we put our trust in, all the things that we hope for and desire and dream of, they can come to nothingness in just a fraction of a second. It only took a virus to turn our world upside down. Hopefully, this experience has drawn and enabled all of us to draw closer to our Lord, especially for those that do not have any fear of God, those that do not have even the thought of God in their hearts, in their lives, or in their mind. I pray that you will stop and you will assess this truth and the reality that there, this, is all there is, this is all there is to life, that there is coming a day when those who put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, those who fear God and walk in his ways, those who obey him and do his will, those who love him with all their heart, mind, and soul will have peace, total peace, the peace that passeth all understanding, even when we lose everything. You see, happiness, fulfillment, and satisfaction is not in things. <clears throat> there is no need for us to chase after these things. But even without any of these things, if we have God in our lives, there is total and absolute peace. Why? Because he is the fountain and source of everything that we need. If he is with us, we have everything. If he's not with us, we don't have anything. You may listen to me and say, well, woman, woman, it's easy for you to say that I tell you the truth that is because you have not experienced the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have not experienced the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ. When you have Christ in your heart and in your lives, when the Lord is there with you, when you walk with him, you will have peace regardless of what you have lost or regardless of what you, have, what you don't have because he is the fountain and source of every blessing and every need that we have on planet Earth can be fulfilled and can be met only by our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. He said so many times that he has the waters of life, living water of life. We go and drink from broken cisterns and we are never satisfied. But when we come and drink of the water that the Lord Jesus has to give us, even like the Samaritan woman who went from man to man to man to man and still was so unsatisfied until she came and she drank of the fountain of the river of, river of life that brought her total peace, gave her meaning to life, and changed her whole life. This water of life that's given to us by our Lord Jesus Christ is still flowing. It's still available for you and for me. The words of, of our Lord Jesus Christ that bring us peace and that bring us security are still available for you and for me to trust. Uh, don't trust in your wealth. Don't trust in what you have. Don't trust in people. You tr put your trust in the word of God. This word is trustworthy and credible. Heaven and earth will pass away, but these words shall not pass away. I trust and pray that you will take an inventory of your life. You will sit down and recognize what the preacher or King Solomon had to say in the book of Ecclesiastes, that all of these things are useless and worthless how much wealth he had, how many women he had, how many palaces he had, how many buildings he built. You know, King Solomon's reign was different from that of King David's during the time of King Solomon. It was a, a reign marked with peace and prosperity, and uh, his main focus was in building. Whereas during the time of David, there were so many wars, and of course, when you have wars, it's kind of difficult to have peace, but in spite of wars, if the Lord Jesus Christ is in your life and, he's, and you are with him, you can still experience peace because God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. He knows how to make wars to cease to the ends of the earth. <clears throat> he breaks the bow asunder and he is able to destroy the chariots too. Put your trust in this Lord Jesus Christ in times of plenty and in times of nothingness. In times of war and in times of peace, there is no other person that I can point you to than our Lord Jesus Christ, who is called the Prince of Peace, who is the King of Glory, who is the creator of the heavens and the earth, who has all power in heaven, on earth, and even below. Let us pray. 
Our Heavenly Father, we bless you and praise you for this word that has come to us this evening. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you will help these words to sink deep down into our hearts and to our minds and that we will pay attention to what the preacher had to say, that all of life is worthless and meaningless and empty, no matter what we have and no matter what we are chasing after but that our soul will be satisfied and our lives will be blessed by accepting you as our Lord and our Savior. For those that have not known you, Lord, we pray that you will enable them to open their hearts this evening and to accept you, Jesus, as their Lord and their Savior and their guide through life and even after life. And we will give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.